Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us once again. Here we're going to run a, a short special edition of the podcast. Um, most of you probably know because we've been touting it on our social media a bunch the last several days, but Digital Colonian Log finally released. And so we're going to spend tonight doing a little bit of a tutorial and giving you a chance to ask uh, any questions you might have about the app, its features, or uh things that might be coming in the future with it. So um, we hope you uh, find tonight informative and educational. As always, we've got Kevin Minto managing the chat and helping us with some technical things. And Kevin Labiel, who uh, is one of our designers of Digital Colonian Log, will be joining us to help guide you through the application. Um, he and I worked together to make Digital Colonian Log happen. All right, so we're just going to get into it, and uh, if you've got questions, drop them in the chat there, and Mr. Minto will uh, bring them out for the whole audience to hear. All right? So, Kevin, let's pull this up, and uh, let's just start with the basics, right? So, of course, here's your home page, essentially. You log in. Um, the app, we're running a demo version of the app, so ignore the URL that you see at the top of the screen. This is a demo database, so things here could get wiped at any minute. Um, again, the URL for the live app is dcl.theturtleroom.com. So we don't uh, mess that database up with fake info. We're going to be using this demo version for you tonight. So here's your homepage at dcl.theturtleroom.com. After you've logged in, you can see your name up in the top left hand, your right, top right hand corner, you can see your username. And if you click down on there, you've got a couple options to go to your profile, change your password. If you are a premier premium, sorry, premium user, um, you're gonna have an option to export your data to an Excel file if you want. All right. Um, but that again, that feature is only available to premium users. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get in here is, well, add a turtle. So let's go add a turtle, Kevin. And you can uh, just make up some data as you want. So Kevin's going to type in some random data here for a turtle. Not all fields are required. If you click on any of the blue question marks, it will give you information about the particular field. Um, so if you do have questions about a field, just hit that blue question mark. and I'll answer your questions, whether it's required or not. If you've missed a required field and you hit the add specimen button, it's going to flag them for you so you can actually make sure you get all the required info in there. So, Kevin, why don't you fill us out a turtle and then hit add specimen once it's uh, sufficiently ready to go. One of the things you'll notice is for whatever reason we're doing screen captures like this, the drop down menus don't show very well. So um, you'll have to see what the options are a little bit on your own when you do that. But hit that add spe specimen button. So here we have our new uh, new turtle. And Kevin picked us a unique turtle tortoise species that most of you are probably not all that familiar with, but who knows. Um, Cursobius is a new genus that's been broken off from Homopus. And so this used to be Homopus signatus. It's now uh, Cursobius signatus. Anyway, so this is the general view, and you're going to see lots of information, primary ID, name, species, sex. If there is an acquisition date, it'll show up. Um, if hatch type, if hatch date, et cetera. If not, they'll say unknown. And if you don't have particular ID fields filled in, they'll just say not available. All right? Um, <clears throat> anytime you want to change any of this information here, um, the best place to go is to the life events tab. And so here's going to track all the life events, but there's going to be this add new button here as well. And so these are all events for the turtles. Now, again, the menu isn't going to show for Kevin there for you. Um, so I'm going to actually read off the possible event types. Um, name change. So if you want to change the name or add a name to the turtle, uh, sex confirmation or change, um, transfer out. You, can, um, you may have noticed when you were adding the turtle, there's an option to make it public or private. Public turtles will be viewable by the general public who at least has an account in Digital Colonial Log. They'll be able to see general information, but not your name at all. 
okay? Just information about the turtle and its measurements. Um, other options in event type death, um, adding a notching mark ID, a microchipping ID, or assigning a stud book ID if the animal has been added to a stud book. So any of those things that you might want to change, um, you can come in through the event uh, menu here. Um, required fields here, um, ID, type, and date are all required. Um, Kevin, hit the question mark on event location. I can't remember if that one's required or not. Yeah, that, okay, so location's optional. And the notes are optional as well. And so um, let's pick an event type, Kevin, and add an event to the database. Um, pick one of the ones that brings down another field, actually. Like maybe we'll uh, transfer or a, um, the microchip field will allow you to um, add the microchip ID here as well. So an extra field may pop up depending on what type of event you're adding. So there you can see the microchip field or the stud book field. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to add an event. And since we are transferring it, now that location is required because it's a transfer. And so this one's been added successfully. And so Kevin can click that return button. And so we're back to um, the specimen again. Now, a couple other features I'm going to point out real quick that are you can see all the time. It's up in the right-hand corner. You see PDF report. That is a premium feature only again. All right. This is kind of cool. It will download a PDF report. Um, <clears throat> the red button for delete specimen. Free users are only allowed up to 25 animals. So if you've had an animal that you've transferred out or that died and you don't want it wait, taking up one of your 25 spaces, you can hit that red button to delete the specimen from your list of 25 specimens. All right. Some of our other doc tabs here on this turtle, we've got clutches. And so here we can add a new clutch. Um, there's going to be, we can pick uh, the dam ID, the sire ID, date laid, how many eggs. Um, one of the other things that we've added in is this incubation group feature. That way, for instance, if you're incubating at two different temperatures, so you can get some male animals and some female animals. If this enables you to break the eggs up into two groups and track two sets of incubation temperature and humidity data based on which group um, you're entering the data for. <clears throat> I think it accepts up to six different groups if for whatever reason, you're, maybe you're doing some testing to see what kind of results you get from different temperatures. So you're running multi, like lots of groups. So we do enable it, I think up to six incubation groups. Um, we also have a courtship tab and the courtship tab is for various different log information, specifically about breeding and courtship behavior. And so you can see all these different fields here. Again, we're trying to make this as thorough as possible so you can track just about anything you want. Um, here, every field is going to be required except for the notes, I think. Uh, but we're going to require start date, a start time, an end date, and an end time. Oh, start times are optional, apparently. So at least a start date and an end date. All right. Kevin's going to throw in a time here for us anyway. I'm going to say that cop mounting and copulation were observed. So we have this is a multi-select. And for those of you unfamiliar with multi-select multi menus, you, you use the control button to help select multiple items in the menu. If you click an item without the control button, it's going to wipe all the rest of your choices, and now you only have one choice again. So if you want to collect multiple items, use your control button, just like you normally would in your file system. Um, I think in Apple, that's a command button, Kevin, Minto? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't use Apple, actually. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought you had an Apple computer. But anyway. Yes, yes, yes. It's Okay. Yeah, or the other Kevin, yes, so the command button if you're on an Apple. All right. 
So that's kind of the basics here. For each one of these tabs on the main... What kind of error were we getting there, my friend? Sorry about that. Uh, I did not see. It didn't specify. The okay. Error. But something we uh, corrected on the live version. So. Okay. All right. I'll have to go, we'll have to go look at that then. But anyway. I can try again. Okay. Yeah, because this is actually a duplicate of the live, as far as the code of the current live version. So I'd be curious to see what. Okay, we'll have to look at that one. All right, so since it is new, we are still uh, dealing with uh, you know one or two bugs here or there. And so um, down at the bottom, at the footer of every page, there's actually a contact us button. And on that form, one of the options is a bug report. And so um, one of the options under the email subjects is gonna be bug report. So if you do run into something like that, and you're not sure what's going on, head over to this contact form, bug report, both Kevin Labiel and I will get it, and we'll work on a solution. All right. <clears throat> um, same goes if you have an, an idea for a new feature. That's another feature request is another one of those options over there. So let's go back to that new turtle or, that we had added. What was that test turtle Cursobius? Um, so we've got measurements as an option, and we can add new measurements. There's also this little checkbox for more measurements. If you don't want just weight, SCL and PL, we can get you. There's also carapace width, plaster width, interior lobe length, posterior lobe length, shell height, and nuli. If somebody believes we should be adding extra measurements, again, send us a feature request. We'll look at possibly adding some of that in there. All right. And Kevin's going to add us one here. Um, just an FYI, a Christobia Signatus would probably not even get this long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, but yeah. anyway, let's add that measurement so everybody can see kind of what this shows up like on the chart now. So now we have a table with our measurements. And if we click on this chart button, we're actually going to get a graphical representation of this. And so we've got three data points, one for each measurement we've entered in. As you continue to add more measurements, you're going to get a um, line graph here. Um, that graphical representation is available for anyone. Um, a lot of other graphical representations in the app are premium features only. And so another one of those links that are down at the bottom, while Kevin enters another measurement here, one of the other links down at the bottom is compare plans. That's if you want to compare the features um, between the free and premium versions, you can check that out. And so here you can see what this would look like with uh, several measurement points in there. You can see how, how the lines get drawn, and this will get you know bigger. Actually, if you click and highlight, you can limit your data to a certain chunk, and then the reset zoom button shows up where you can return it to the original view. So as you get lots of data, data points in there, that can be really handy. And now there's also this button that he just clicked on, print chart. Um, or download an image, etc. This is a premium feature here. So premiums can print or download these charts, um, whereas free users won't be able to do that. All right. Um, we can also um, switch our x-axis to by age as opposed to by date. But that turtle had an unknown hatch date. So the age graph just isn't going to really do a whole lot for you if you don't have a hatch date. Um, let's check out some of our other options here. We've got a health tab. Steve, can I ask you a quick question? Oh, yeah, Minto, question. With measurement data, can you alter whether or not you want it to be like grams or ounces hypothetically or centimeters? Um, yeah, so there's a drop down for each unit. Um, I think for weight, our options are, and Kevin, the menu doesn't show, so can you read those off for us? Uh, yeah, so you have grams, kilograms, and pounds. Okay, and then under the length units, we have inches, centimeters, and millimeters okay. as options. Yes, correct. Great. All right. And so um, they'll be stored 
at the original, and then everything also gets converted to centimeters. And if you want to see the originals, you can use this drop down to get some of the other columns as well. So anytime you see that columns button above this table, that means that we might have other fields that are currently hidden because it would just be too wide to really display in a friendly manner. Right. All right. Then we also have a pictures tab. And so click the uploads info button so our users can get a quick shot at that. If you have questions about uploads, you can get them here. So premium users have an access to unlimited quantity of uploads and will be able to view the original files in the original quality. Um, free users are subject to the following restrictions, which could be subject to change depending on future needs of DCL. Uploads will be compressed and users will only be able to view these compressed files. Um, the number of uploads will be restricted to 10 pictures per specimen uploaded within one month's time or 75 within 12 months time. And that's per specimen. And then file types, we currently accept JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs, GIFs, and the new Apple format, HEIC. All right. Um, so to add pictures, you're going to first add a picture set. And each one will, so like if you took a bunch of pictures on the first, you can add a picture set for the first and click add new pictures. And that's going to add the picture set. And so now that we get a little plus sign. And so now we can upload specific images. We can upload a carapace, plastron, front view, rear view, head left, top, right, chin, rear marginals, anal scutes, and then we have these two other views. And so for each picture set, you can upload up to 12 different images. All right? And we did it this way so that you can sort them, but that we also can um, use these in other educational materials possibly. And um, it helps us sort things in the database for a quick recall as well. Um, so hit the browse button. It'll pull up your normal menu. Once you have a picture, you can click upload and it will upload. And then actually once it has uploaded, the space that has the upload box will actually turn into the image. So you can view the image here. And then, uh, so Kevin's just going to upload a random picture. So he uploaded his profile picture. You can kind of see how this function works. And so now the carapace slot for this image set has been taken up, but you still have 11 other images to use here. And you can click on that, view a slightly bigger version. And why don't you head back to the animal itself and they can see what this looks like in the pictures tab. So now in the pictures tab, um, you still have the plus button because you can add more pictures, but here we can see the, the picture we uploaded. We can add some notes to this picture set. And then this view original button for premium users. Kevin, why don't you click on that view original button for us? It'll open a new tab with the whole, with the original size file for premium users. All right. And then another premium feature that we wanted to mention here is the documents area. And so you can also access this up above. There's this big My Documents area. My Documents will list any document you've put onto your account. The Documents tab within an individual turtle will only show the documents that are attached to that turtle. So this one will only show documents attached to that specific turtle. So you can hit Attach New Document. And you can attach a document to this specimen. And so we're going to pick a date for the document. We're going to name the file. Don't include the file name or the file extension, I mean. And then we're going to select a document type. Now, again, you can't see that menu. So Kevin, would you read that menu off for us? Yes. Um, so you have CBW permits, CITES papers, DNA paperwork, purchase record, sale record, state license, state permit, veterinary paperwork, and other. And so if you select other, you'll get a drop down that actually gets you to enables you to label the type yourself. Um, and then so you can also choose to an attach in a document to nothing. 
instead of a specimen. You can also choose to attach it to a species. So if you have a document that applies to an entire group of species that you might be working with, you could attach it to that species instead of the single animal. And so that document, you'd still be able to see on the single animal because it might apply to them. And then you can add any notes about the file. Then you can browse for a file and then upload the file. I'm not sure I have something here. What was that? I said, I'm not sure I have something to. Okay. Yeah, any PDF or doc would work, but. Oh, here. Maybe. Um, this. Um, <laughs> this. Um, this function can accept lots of different document types. Um, we're talking JPEGs, um, PNGs, TIFFs, PDFs, documents, Excel files, basically any kind of document you might want to attach to an animal. If you think a file type is missing, please let us know and we can you know, look into possibly adding it. Again, this is a premium feature only. And... <clears throat> Um, again, one of the reasons for that is partly because um, uploads are limited for free users as well because of space. Um, so this has been successfully uploaded. So you can hit done and it will clear the page here for you to add another document if you want. Or you saw that other drop down and you could have gone to look at that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, my documents. So um, you can kind of see the options here. It tells you the file size, what it's attached to. Um, Kevin, why don't you click on the link that's there under file name? Yeah, yeah. And this will actually open the PDF up for you so you can view it. All right. And um, <clears throat> since this was attached to, the to a species, we should be able to see it on turtles of that species. So we should also see this document attached to this turtle as well. So we're going to be able to see this in a couple different places. All right. Um, Kevin, why don't you head up to public turtles? It's one of the few places we've been. We haven't been yet. And so here we've got a list of turtles that have been made public. And so we can click on these and view a public turtle. But you'll notice no usernames are attached here anywhere. So we want to try to maintain your privacy, even though you're trying to share what you're doing with other, with other people. And so we can see the public view. We can see this turtle's attached to a user who's in Martinique. Um, age, hatch type, et cetera, measurement data. And then we can also get a measurement chart. Now, this measurement chart here is going to be premium only. Um, free users are only going to see the table in this case. Um, so we feel like there's a lot of different stuff here. And so we're excited for you to test it out. We're excited for you to find bugs to honestly and report back so we can fix them. Um, we want to continue to build this and produce this for, for your use. It really is the first thing of its kind designed specifically for turtles that's available at a reasonable price for any, for everyday users. All right. So um, DCL free 25 turtles. We do have image storages, but as we talked about before, monthly, yearly li limits, as well as compressed images, no document storage. For data, you'll see tables for all your data with one or two graphical charts. Public data, you'll only see tables. And we'll have more features coming soon. Um, for premium users, unlimited turtles, unlimited images, unlimited documents, um, data views, we're going to have lots of extra graphical charts for you to look at. One of the cool ones is we have basically what we like to call a clutch matrix or a breeding matrix. And it doesn't look as cool since it's only clutched with one particular animal. But if we had multiple, if we had multiple sires, we'd have multiple different cells here. And we could, so we could look at how many clutches or eggs were laid by each pairing. And so if we click on an individual cell, we can also see some information about that clutch by itself, I believe. Yeah, I can try and make a, a quick mail so we have a second uh, entry here if you want. Either or. Um, the point stands, this, this layout, while it's a premium version, um, gets a lot cooler as you have more interaction. 
And one of the other premium features that's going to eventually be upcoming is going to be a species view where you can get a breeding matrix of all the species or all the specimens within your species project as well. So there's a lot that's going to be coming up in the future as well. Yeah. And here you can view the uh, incubation the group, group right. data. So if you click on a clutch that's been produced, you can get all these other tabs where you can see the incubation data. You can see the groups. Do you have incubation data in here that's, that we can show what a graph looks like for incubation data? Yes. And so. again, table is available to everybody. The nice pretty chart is going to be a premium feature. And so you can kind of see we've got one group is in the purple, another group's in the pink. So we've got the females and the males in this case. And so the red line in the middle is the median. And then the shaded areas covers out the max and the min. And we can also get a graph of this for humidity as well, I believe. Yes. So again, you see the colors are matched the same. Males are in the purple. Females are in the pink. And the same deal is happening. These ones even overlap a little bit. You can see the median humidity for the females is right up below the bottom of the entire range for the males. Um, actually, Kevin, go down to the bottom and click on one of those things. So like here, where we can't quite see all the female because the male's covering it up. We can actually turn the male off temporarily so we can just look at the female, turn it back on. Any of these graphs, you can turn on and off different things. It's really kind of cool. So we hope you enjoy this. We hope you really um, spend some time using it and give us some feedback. And we'd love to continue to improve it. And so... Um, it's a web-based app for now, but that means as long as you've got a browser connection on your Android phone, your iPhone, your something else phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever, you can get to this app at dcl.theturtleroom.com. It is fully responsive. So we feel like you'll have a decent user experience in any layout. If you're on your phone, we recommend landscape often for the width because it's a little bit easier to see some things. Um, but tablets and desktops are really get a nice big view. Um, we take advantage of the full width screen when you're on those devices. Let me add something to that really quickly. Uh, if you're on an Apple device like an iPhone or an iPad, you can hit the share button on the bottom and you'll see create icon on desktop or home screen, excuse me. So it'll act just like an app. You won't have to go to your web browser and type in the address. It'll save there from your home screen. There you go. And you can actually do, um, on an Android, I believe you can put uh, browser shortcuts on your home screen as well. So you can kind of treat it like an app in that respect, as you can just put the shortcut right on your desktop and, and head off. Uh, I have a question from Cole. Okay, go uh, for it. For someone with just a solo Egyptian tortoise hatchling, which version would you recommend? Um, in that case, you know, we'd probably recommend at least looking at starting with the free version. Um, if you want to get into the fancy graphs, though, you're going to need to go up to the premium version. Um, but for one, one animal, we'd probably say, well, you know, use the free version. And if you decide you really want to get into some, some more advanced data keeping with it, then you might consider, um, you know, spending the money, um, there is currently a two-week free premium trial available. So if you sign up for the premium version, it will not charge your payment for up to, for two weeks. So you can try that out. And if you don't want to spend the money on the yearly plan, you can cancel that um, before the two weeks are up um, as one option. But, you know, one tortoise, probably the free version, unless you're really into the graph, you know, the visual graphical displays. And we will hopefully be adding more free, ver um, uh, more things into the free version as well. We hope to expand both versions beyond their current state. Um, we, uh, Kevin Labiel and I were talking and we're probably looking at um, mid spring as probably a full 2.0 type version where we'll be adding a bunch of extra things in. Um, but we will be releasing updates in the meantime. Uh, we've already made uh, a few patches for various different bugs that we've found. Uh, Steve, why don't you talk about the network? Network, yeah. The one place we haven't been is my network. Um, 
<clears throat> so one of the options that, in fact, let me pull up a, an unlogged in tab here for a second. Or actually, Kevin, go to the profile. That'll work. Go to the profile. Down at the bottom of the profile, you see this search privacy. I want to be searchable. So you can choose any of these six items to be searchable by, or you can say, I want my account to be private. Yeah. And so it, you can connect with other breeders through here by uh, searching for users. Uh, but again, they're only going to be able to search, be searched by the fields they've enabled. So this user is only searchable by their first name and, and their public turtles. So I, I could look for somebody with a female Cursovia signatus and I'd find this user because they have one of those turtles. Um, but so you can see the search up at the top. We've got the five different user profile fields, first name, last name, email address, social handles, country. And then we've got the public turtle fields. Um, social handles currently only searches if you have something else in one of the other fields. All right. Now, first name, last name, and email address are starts with fields. And you can, if you click on the blue question mark, you see that. All right. This is email address of the user starts with. So you have to know what it starts with. You don't have to get the whole thing, but you have to know what it starts with. Same thing with first name and last name. Because social handles end up getting reversed or whatever, we've enabled them to be able to just any part of the any part of the handle that matches, social handle will grab that. All right. Social media fields that are currently in the profile are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. So you could enter those fields in there if you wanted to be able to be searched by your Instagram handle because you share a lot of pictures or and some people might want to check out other information about your animals on DCL. Um, so hopefully, you know, as more people use this, there will be more people you could find in the network. But part of the idea is you're only really finding um, – the idea is you're finding people you already know and you're not just hunting for people with the exception of maybe the public turtles. You're looking for people who have animals like you have or whatever else. And so you can kind of see when you've got a couple contacts, you can see some of their information here. If they have some of the social information put in their profile, you'll actually see some of this here. So Kevin, leave that view up for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go edit my profile since I'm one of your things and people will see that just how reactive this can be is I should have, I typed in something. It should show up here quickly, but maybe not. If Instagram, maybe I miscoded that refresh that page, maybe. There it goes. Now it shows up Instagram. So you can see my Instagram handle there because I just entered that into my profile. All right. If you want to remove somebody from your network, we've got a button for that too. All right. Do we have any other questions uh, from uh, viewers, Kevin? Not currently. All right. Well, um, unless there's anything that either one of you think we should show off, I'd, I'm, I say we're going to call this a night. And for those of you with more questions, with suggestions, with bug problems, just shoot us a message and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, again, there's that contact us form at, that you can get to on DCL. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, we'll be back with a, another normal full episode of the podcast in September. Um, I can't remember who our scheduled guest is from se for September, but I know one of the things we're going to end up talking about is the upcoming TSA conference. Again, um, I'll be headed down to Fort Worth at the end of this week. And a couple of our other team members will be headed there with me. And uh, there'll probably be close to 300 people again, getting together to talk about the conservation and biology of turtles and tortoises. Um, we're looking at Tucson for next year's conference, from what I've heard. 
So um, maybe if you can't make it out to this year's, you can start thinking about heading out Tucson next August. Uh, and Steve, our guest for next month is uh, Michael S. He runs oh, the Instagram right. official Turtle Insta. Um, yeah. Lots of followers, you know, a lot of people. He does a lot of great work. He's a young, he's a pretty young guy. Uh, he went to Madagascar with the last prices to help out. That's he's right. very, very dedicated to this. Yeah. Yeah. He's in uh, either, I think he's in late middle school. He's, I think, about eighth grade. And um, we've, uh, we've met his, I've met his parents in person at last year's conference. Um, they were there as well as Michael. Um, uh, his, his parents have really, have really, um, you know, enabled Michael to pursue his passions. And so we thought it'd be cool to have him on and give you a chance to hear from a young person who's really in love with turtles and conservation and might give you some ideas on how to better connect with, uh, with kids who are engaged and love turtles and tortoises and, and animals in general. Mm -hmm. So we hope you'll join us again in another month. Um, thanks for having us again tonight, Kevin and Kevin. Thanks for joining me. So I didn't have to do this on my own. And Glad to be here. Anthony is on vacation. Um, and not much, I mean, kind of a vacation, but he's hanging out with Chris at his place. So, like, I don't know, it's a pretty cool vacation. Hang out with, yeah. like, a thousand turtles and tortoises or whatever the number is these days and <laughs> and family. So, yep. um, Anthony, by you'll join us again uh, next month. Hey, and by the way, today is Casey's birthday from Garden State Tortoise, and tomorrow is Anthony's. It is. That's correct. Oh, wow. We have a bunch of back-to-back -back birthdays that pop up from time to time. So feel free to wish uh, our good friend Casey and our she's uh, one of our important staff members here a happy birthday. And uh, tomorrow will be Anthony's birthday as well. I imagine they're probably having some fun celebrating together mm -hmm. uh, tonight and tomorrow. So, yeah, let's sign off. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep rambling, I think. So <laughs> have a good night. All right, good and, night, everybody. Uh, See you, Steve. See you, Kevin. <clears throat>